I'm willing to bet that if you were a kid who grew up in the church like me, you probably heard the story of Jonah more than a few times. Or if you were like me, it wasn't quite told in its entirety. See, I remember as a kid that um, when the story of Jonah was told, we were told that, you know, God, um, God sent Jonah to go to Nineveh to preach to them a message of repentance. We got that. But as a kid, I always remember it being told in the vein of Jonah thought like the Ninevites were icky and they had cooties or whatever and they he didn't want to go near them. It was told from this perspective of that Jonah kind of just like didn't like the Ninevites and like didn't want to be associated with them as opposed to the actual reason. If you look at the end of the book, if you look at the end of the book of Jonah, you could see that Jonah is actually incredibly angry that, you know, God did indeed relent from the judgment that he was going to give the Assyrians. If you do like a little bit of research into the historical context of this, Jonah was a prophet during the reign of Jeroboam II. So this was still when Israel was divided into Israel and Judah. And at the time, um, Nineveh was the capital of Assyria, and Assyria was Israel's sworn enemy, and they hated the Ninevites because of that. So as a result, Jonah didn't want to preach this message of repentance to the Ninevites. He wanted them to die and to burn because he hated them. It's almost like Jonah had a cure for their disease, a cure for their wickedness, and he literally hopped on a ship in the opposite direction just to prevent them from getting that cure. I feel like a lot of times we tend to worry about what exactly, you know, God wants us to do in our life for his will. And I think the story of Jonah is a really sort of cool story to consider because you have to remember that Jonah was quite literally running away from the will of God, and yet it was still fulfilled. Jonah was swallowed by the fish, spat out on dry land, and then he went out and preached a message of repentance and the people repented. I don't think that this story is saying that we should just go and disobey God because he's just going to catch us, but it does show that no matter what, and I feel like the Bible has a lot of examples of these, like no matter how far you are, no matter how far you stray, God will always come back to you and his will will always be done. I think it's also worth considering, you know, like just how great God's grace and mercy is. You know, it says in the book of 2 Peter that, you know, like God is not slow as some count slowness, but he is patient and he does not desire anyone to perish, but for all to reach repentance. It's interesting because I feel like a lot of people characterize like New Testament God and Old Testament God as like completely different characters, but God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I think this story is a kind of a neat example of that. So if there's anything that you get from this video, I just want you to remember that God is a loving father. He cares for you and that no matter how far you think you're gone, he will always come back for you and he's always there for you. Now, of course, a good father has to discipline, has to enact discipline, but in the end, that discipline is meant to make us stronger. So at the end of the day, just remember that God loves you and God will always, God will always chase after you and God desperately wants you.